Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we are building three new jar aquariums. Uh, the purpose of these projects is to raise uh, leeches, yeah, while also testing some of our mosses and, uh, you know, propagating some other floating plants as well as culturing a few of our other pet species like paramecium, uh, ostracods, copepods, and some other creatures as well. So these are mason jars, and uh, these are not going to be any type of sealed project. They are going to be open, and uh, that's so that I can get in there and, you know, collect various things as they reproduce. Hopefully we can get our leeches to feed and to breed in here, and then we can collect a few of them and use them in other projects in the future. So we're going to start off with some all-natural compost from my backyard, and we'll use one of our little shovels here for this. Uh, a few scoops for each jar. I love these little shovels. They are perfect for this type of work. And uh, they're also really cheap. You can get them on Timu or one of those websites for almost nothing, just a couple dollars. But we're going to flatten out that compost a little bit. These are going to be Wallstad-style jars. And a lot of people assume that when it's uh, you're using the Wallstad method, it means you're simply going to cover some soil or compost with sand. And that is true. Uh, but there's so much more to it. You know, you're going to build a functional ecosystem. So we'll get into that later. Uh, but we're using some sand here. Um, you guys have seen uh, recently, a lot of you watched that short video I put up about the pond that I'm digging out with a real shovel <laughs> in the backyard. And uh, this sand came from that excavation. So, uh, yeah, this is locally sourced. All of it's coming out of my backyard. Almost all of it. But we'll use our little shovel to help cover that soil with uh, our, our sand to cover that compost. And I'm going to speed it up a little bit just so you guys don't get bored. I've also included a single piece of marble in each jar. This will have the effect of uh, sort of balancing the pH, keeping it around 6.8 or 7. As the water becomes acidic, a bit of that marble will dissolve and help to level it out. I've also included a bit of moss in each jar. So my goal is to compare the different mosses that we have and to test uh, how they grow underwater. So on the right here, we have some java moss, the uh, famous aquarium plant. Everybody loves java moss. I do too. And in the middle, we have some of our own polydarium moss. And on the left, we have some unknown, unidentified moss. Uh, that you have seen in my previous full-length video where we built uh, some little moss farms. And uh, that's exactly where this stuff came from. So here I'm using my finger as a bit of a uh, spout to control the, the water flow. You have to be careful not to blow away your sand layer when you're building these projects. I am using uh, cycled aquarium water here. And uh, that will be very important later in the video. But uh, it, the sand that we use does have some small particles of clay, and it will make the water a little cloudy at first. Nothing to worry about. So here I'm using one of my other little shovels to add a few bladder snail egg sacs. Hopefully you can see them here. And uh, recently our buddy Margaret on Facebook was asking about how long it takes for bladder snails to hatch. And in my experience, it takes about two weeks. Uh, but it's hard to tell exactly when an egg sac was laid. So you have to kind of use your best judgment. Uh, but in my experience, you can easily, you know, just collect some eggs from the wall of your aquarium and toss them into another project. And the snails will begin hatching eventually, and they'll be very happy and well adapted to the new tank. I'll also throw a few adults in here as well. So ultimately, I want to raise leeches in here. And of course, we have to feed the leeches. So the snails are going to be the primary food source. We're also going to include some spike rush in here. Spike rush is a very interesting plant. It will grow underwater. It will also grow in soil. And uh, it can be very hard to identify. But this stuff is very durable. It's hard to kill. Spike rush is really cool. Uh, it's, it's interesting. Um, I'm able to grow it almost in the dark. Um, it'll grow in uh, high, strong light. It'll grow in cold tanks, in hot tanks. It doesn't seem to matter too much in my experience. Uh, spike rush doesn't care. <laughs> it's also the primary filtration for my uh, very overstocked guppy tank. 
that uh, we might show again one day on the channel. But uh, I love Spike Rush. It's beautiful. It's really cool to look at. Uh, those strings are basically its leaves, and those little knots in the middle are the, the plant itself. So here's a look at one of our sealed ecospheres that we built last year, and you, you can get a good idea of what Spike Rush looks like over time as it grows. It'll fill out the aquarium very nicely, but it won't block our vision, and it will still allow our pets to move around freely within the jar. So, uh, yeah. I look forward to seeing it develop in these new jars that we're building today. Now here we are one day after initial setup and we have a new friend who has appeared. I believe this is a terrestrial worm who came in with the moss, though I could be wrong. He might have come from one of our aquariums. <laughs> uh, but we've seen these before, uh, especially in one of the ecospheres. It's just kind of bobbing around looking for detritus, uh, dirt. <laughs> and things to uh, digest. So that's a good sign. I'm happy to see this little guy here, and I uh, just hope that it is a truly aquatic species and that it can survive in this jar. We'll just have to hope for the best, and uh, hopefully you can see it. I know he's about the same color as the sand, <laughs> uh, but that's fine. And up here at the surface, you'll see a few of our own tubaflex worms. I believe they are tubaflex, but these guys were wild caught, and, uh, you know, I just have to kind of use my best judgment. But they hang up, uh, they hang around up here just above the surface of the water. They form colonies or clusters, and they reach around and look for food as it floats around the surface. So, good to see them in here as well. I am certain that they came in with our uh, cycled aquarium water. So here's the jars after two days of initial setup. They look great. Honestly, I'm very happy with this, but they're not quite done yet. So they're not quite done. Uh, next step, we're going to add uh, some little plants. And specifically, we're going to add some water meal. Water meal is like a very tiny version of duckweed. It has no roots, and I think it's really cool. And we're just going to inject it in here. I love to watch it just flow into the tank like this. Uh, but water meal is very interesting to me. And, uh, you know, I was building these and I thought like, hey, I want some more water meal. So these are going to function a bit like uh, little nano cultures. So we can grow water meal and collect it at a later date. And I just love this stuff. I think it's really cool. Just watch it inject into the aquarium. Like that's awesome, right? Uh, but it's a floating plant and it behaves a lot like duckweed. Uh, my uh, hope is that it will not block as much of the oxygen and gas transfer at the surface of the water like duckweed might. And it also looks really cool. So yeah, I'm gonna use it in more projects. We're gonna build a future ecosphere or a polydarium uh, with a lot of water meal and spike rush and some different things. So these tanks are a bit like a test run. Uh, there's a look at the water meal with a few pieces of regular duckweed in there uh, for comparison. You can see just how much smaller the water meal is compared to the duckweed. It's tiny, it's minuscule. It's really cool. It's a very tiny plant. And uh, yeah, I just love it. So yeah, we're going to raise some more in here. And I'm going to keep saying, yeah, occasionally. <laughs> uh, but now we're going to add a few adult bladder snails to each jar. And uh, overall, you guys, the project, uh, the goal here is to raise our snail leeches. I've talked a bit about the leeches in the past. I've shown them to you occasionally. And I've mentioned that they are very valuable to me. I don't want to include them in an ecosphere just yet. And that's because I don't have many of them. At any time, we have maybe 10 or 20 leeches. So I'm going to include them in these projects. And uh, these uh, poor, unfortunate bladder snails are test subjects. They are going to be food for the leeches. Mainly, I want to see if the leeches will completely eradicate the snails or if they can kind of coexist. And, uh, you know, if the leeches can feed on them and, you know, allow the snails to survive the process. If all goes well, then we will have a stable population of bladder snails with an increasing population of leeches. So now I'm going to feed each jar with a scoop of compost. It's going to be a little messy, but most of our worms, our snails, and our other pets, they pretty much eat dirt. You know, that's the easiest way to describe it. So this little scoop of compost will help to get things started. I don't want to add any cucumber slices just yet because that will make the water very cloudy. 
uh, this stuff will generally sink to the bottom, so we should be fine. But uh, my ultimate goal is to test the effects of the leeches on the snails and see if we can't possibly include leeches in future sealed uh, ecosphere experiments and use them to control the population of the bladder snails to slow down their breeding rate a little bit. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's experimental at this point. Just hoping for the best. But uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens. So we're going to add a couple leeches to each jar. And we're also going to add some mud midget. This is another floating plant, which I think is very interesting that more people should work with in their aquariums. It's a, a bit like a tiny spikes, little X's, and they float and they break apart and they grow new plants. But here's our little leech guy, and uh, or girl, honestly, I don't know, I'm still learning about them. But they are leeches, they basically have a suction cup on the front of their body and the back of their body. And once they're on something, it can be very hard to dislodge them. So here on my pipette, uh, we're just going to kind of wait until the little thing kind of crawls off of there. I promise we won't hurt it. And here we are. Here's a better look at one of our leeches. I love these little guys. Um, I've had them on my hands before. They are not going to bite a human. Generally, they seem really frightened or they just want to escape when I try to play with them. <laughs> uh, not quite like the, me the leeches that you might think of. Uh, from movies and like swamps and things that you know feed on blood um yeah <laughs> i was afraid of these little leeches at first at first excuse me uh, i was very afraid of them but over time i've just come to realize that they're fine you know it's not nothing it's not anything to worry about uh, just like our planaria when i first found some planaria i was frightened <laughs> it's like oh no they're gonna get in my tank and kill everything but over time i've come to just understand them and accept them so this is part of the process, and we're doing that here with the leeches. Please forgive me if I get a little tongue-tied here and there. I had a long day at work, and I'm just happy to unwind and make a video with you guys. So within about two minutes of the leeches being introduced into the aquarium, um, they immediately began attacking the bladder snails. Uh, somewhat violently, I might, I might add. Uh, you can see a few ostracods here and there as well. I don't want to focus too much on the poor snails being attacked. Um, I mainly want to see if they can survive this process. If our leeches can feed on them, uh, well, without completely, you know, eradicating the snail population from each jar. So there's another very healthy bladder snail. And so far, it looks like we're going to be okay. Yeah, about two days after setup, our snails are still alive. They're cruising around. And our leeches are doing fine as well. With our leeches, they are transparent, so you're able to see their digestive system. You can kind of tell if they've been feeding on anything, and in particular, if you know on, they're feeding on the uh, fluids of the bladder snails. But here's a very happy-looking bladder snail cruising around looking for food, and if you look closely on its shell, I love their little eyes. They kind of look like a little elephant or something. But if you look at its shell, you will notice a leech just hanging out there. Kind of makes sense, right? That's his food source, so he's just going to latch on and just hang out. But the snail ultimately seems unaffected, cruising around looking for food, which is a very natural behavior for them. I'm surprised that it's not shaking its shell back and forth, which is uh, one of their ways of defending themselves. doesn't seem to mind too much. I don't think the leech can penetrate the shell. I think it's just sort of latched on and just waiting till it can feed again, you know, sooner or later. We also have quite a few paramecium in here, and of course our ostracods. You might see a few copepods, some detritus worms, and some other pets. And so my ultimate goal here is to add our leeches to our creature collection. I want to study them. I want to learn more about uh, feeding them, uh, helping them to reproduce, you know, and expanding their population so we can include them in various ecospheres in the future. So thanks for watching, guys. Big shout out to our patrons, Clay Wise, Swan C., Jay, Jeff Kiesner, and Ashley Danielle. If you would like to support the channel, uh, please check out our Patreon linked in the description below. You can donate any amount, even a dollar helps, or you can join as a free user and just show a little extra love for the channel. Either way, I am grateful and I thank you. So to finish up here, I have created some very simple lids for our jars using the screen mesh that we use in all of our projects. 
and uh, some simple rims from some mason jars. This will allow water to evaporate. Uh, we can add fresh water as needed and we can easily unscrew them to add some food while also protecting the tanks from flying insects. So thanks for watching guys, have a great day. Please check out the other videos appearing on the screen now and I'll see you again soon.